Hello, so today we're going to start this pirate ship drawing where we draw it in pencil and then we add value, different values from a value scale on our finished drawing. So we're going to start with a square piece of paper. You need to write your name and the day you have art, day A, day B, day C. You're going to flip it over. And on the first day, you're going to start with the hull of the ship. So the hull of the ship is the body of the ship. You're going to do the water line and everything from the water line below on the first day. So you're not going to be drawing the ship and then adding all the stuff. We're going to do it very step by step. So we're going to focus on the hull of the ship, the water line, and everything below the water line. And the things that I want you to include is wooden planks on your ship. So these strips or rectangles of wood. I want you to include some portholes, some windows on your ship. I would like you to include an anchor. You need to include some sort of underwater scene. So you might need to draw some sand and some seaweed, um, seashells, uh, a treasure chest, an octopus, um, a shark, any kind of fish that you like. Um, I've included a mermaid. You need to include the rudder of your ship. This is the part of the ship that helps turn the ship side to side. And um, you need to include either an x-ray vision of treasure or you need to include a treasure chest underneath the water, maybe sunken treasure chest. And that's really up to you which way you do it. On here I did kind of an x-ray vision so you can kind of see I did a broken line to show that you could see through the ship. And in the hull of the ship where there's no porthole, behind that wall you can see a pirate standing next to an open treasure chest. Um, you could just put your treasure chest out on the sand and not have to do the x-ray vision. So when you start with the hull of your ship, you probably want to put the top of the hull of your ship kind of in the middle of your paper. If you put it too high on your paper, it doesn't leave you enough room for more pirates and your sails of your ship. If you put it too low, then you have all this room up here and you hardly have any room down here to look at. So I always like to put the hull of my ship kind of in the middle. And I tend to kind of um, either go across, kind of at a curve. Sometimes I add kind of a captain's cabin. Um, it's really up to you how you decide to draw. But I think you should draw light until you get it right. So now I need to include the rudder of my ship. So the part that turns. So it's just basically a curved line on the back of the boat and I need to include um, some wooden planks. But first I want to add some details to my ship. So I want to add maybe a little ledge up here. Eventually I'm going to add some railing so the pirates don't fall off the ship. Okay, now when I add the wooden planks, they're going to go horizontal on the boat. They won't go up and down. I don't want to draw the planks too skinny because then I have to do a bazillion of them. If I draw them a little bit wider, um, it's less work. And you could use a ruler if you want. I like to um, just kind of try to find the curve of the boat and try to either make my planks straight or kind of curve with the curve of the boat. And there's nothing that says these planks have to all be the same thickness. You could have some that are wider than others. Okay, and then when I do the seams of the planks, because the planks aren't one continuous piece, they're pieces that are, um, the edges are set next to each other, I have to set the seams, offset the seams, not next to each other. So I don't want to draw a line from the top of this boat all the way straight down and make all the seams match up because that's kind of creates a weak spot in the boat. So if I put a seam here, and I basically make this the end of this plank and the end of this plank, then I can't put another seam right here because that would be a very weak spot in the boat. So I'm going to stagger them and space them out so that no two seams are close together. And I don't need to put a, a bunch, a ton of seams. Um, just a few is good enough just to show that these are planks. And then I'm going to add some nails where the seams are. 
I can add one or two or four or six, whatever I want. I'm the artist, but I do need to add some nails. And then I also need to add the grain of the wood. So wood, ha wood slats have knots in them, so I'm going to add some knots on a few of the wooden slats. And then they have this wood grain that kind of goes around the knots. I don't make circles or ovals around them, I just kind of do half or partial. And then the rest of the wooden slats have some waves and some grain. I try not to make them all look the same. I try to really make them look more random so it looks more real, more nature made. Um, if I do every single wood grain exactly the same, it looks very machine or man-made. Okay. And this is the rudder, which is also wood grain. Okay, so there's the hull of my ship. I need to include a water line. And if you want to make it very wavy, you can include maybe the wave goes up over the edge. I'm, or if you want to make it real calm, you just draw a straight line across. I'm going to kind of just do a gentle wave. And I'm pushing hard so that you can see the water line. So I don't want to do this lightly now that I have all this detail in the hull of my ship because then I will lose the water line in the grain, wood grain. Okay, so now I can start working on my underwater scene. Um, I can include some sand down here. I don't have to. This could just be the deep ocean and just some fish uh, swimming by. Um, I am going to add some sand so that I can draw a treasure chest. Okay, I'm going to add my treasure chest here. Now, I do have a handout that has some different ideas. Here's the ship, and um, these kind of pirates and things, these are all on top of the ship, so I'm not doing that on the first day. But I do have a treasure chest here that I could look at for some ideas. Um, and then on the back, here's an open treasure chest and some other fish and things that I can include in the underwater scene. So this back part would be really good. This back part of the handout would be good for the first day. Um, there's a couple of things on the other side for the first day, but most of everything that you could possibly need for the first day is on this back part of the handout. I need to include an anchor. So my anchor could be hanging on the side of the boat or could be kind of sticking off the, maybe it's inside the boat and the boat's uh, going in the water so you don't want to put the anchor down. I'm going to put my anchor down because maybe the um, pirates are going to jump out of the boat and swim down to get the treasure. So I have my underwater scene. Not much there. I need to add a little bit more. I have my hull of my ship. I have my rudder, I have portholes, which I could add some screws up here to make it look a little bit more realistic. I have my anchor and my rudder and then either a treasure chest or an x-ray vision to see the treasure in the hull of the ship. So I just want to add some more detail down here because this is pretty plain and then I'll be finished with day one. Okay, so day one is finished. So now I'm ready to move to day two. On day two, I need to work above the deck. So I need masts, which are the big, tall wooden poles that hold the sails up. I need sails. I need a ladder. I need a crow's nest, which is that little place above at the top of the mast for people to look out, pet pirates to look out for land. I need railings so that my pirates don't fall off the ship. I need a Jolly Roger, which is the pirate's flag. And if I haven't done a treasure chest yet, I need that, which I've already done my treasure chest. So now I'm going to do my masts. I can do just one mast. I can do two masts. They could be the same size, one shorter, one, one longer. So I'm going to do one tall mast here. And masts are usually skinnier at the top and they get wider as they get towards the ship. And then you've got the cross to hold the sails up. And I think I'll do one more mast here that's shorter. Now I need um, sails. And you could make your sails rolled up 
and not flying in the wind. And the way that you would do that is you would draw a curved line here and here as if your masts were rolled up. And then you're going to draw some ropes that have the sails tied up. So it's just long, skinny rectangles. And then I'm going to draw as if they're kind of poofy. I need to erase the mast behind there. And then that could be your sails that are rolled up and they're not out flying around yet. If you want them out flowing in the wind, flapping in the wind, then um, I draw some long curves. And this sail's going to be behind. And that's not curved enough. And then this one needs to curve forward too, the same way this one does, because the wind wouldn't blow one sail forward and one sail back. So, And then they have to be tied to the masts. So I've shown you two ways to do the sails on your ship. You can see my finished example here. I did open sails on all of them. I did two masts and I did uh, two rows of sails. I did a top row and a bottom row. And then on this one I just did one row. So that's kind of what that looks like. Um, here's another way that I drew um, my sails tied up or then I also did like a rope holding the sails as they're blowing in the wind. And then on this one, we did more of a smaller mass or smaller sail here and a bigger mass. And here we did the tie and then they, we looped it across. So we did a curved line around the mass and then we did a curved bumpy line as if the sails were tied to the t mast up right there. So those are some different ways to do your mast or your sails. So now I need to do a crow's nest. So I'm going to add a place for pirates to look out. That's kind of too big. Because when I put a pirate up here, if it's the mat, if the crow's nest is too big, then my pirate will be look super tiny in the mat in the crow's nest. There's my mast or my crow's nest. I keep calling it a mast. I'm sorry. My crow's nest. So let's see. I've worked above the deck checking my list to make sure I've included everything I'm supposed to. I've included masts, which are these tall wooden poles. I've included sails, rolled up and out. Oh, I need a ladder to get up to the crow's nest. So I'm going to draw a couple of lines that go from up. And I'm just drawing like a rope ladder. So it's just going to be, and then I'm going to draw these curved lines for the places for the pirates to step onto and the rope to climb up. I have my ladder now. I have my crow's nest. Um, railings. I forgot my railings and my Jolly Roger. So I need a flag. So let's do the flag next. I'm going to tie it on. And since my sails are flying forward, the wind is blowing them forward, my Jolly Roger needs to be flying forward. So my Jolly Roger, and now I need railings so that the pirates don't fall off the ship. I could put them up here, I could put them here. I think I'm going to put them up here. I've got a lot of detail here. So I'm going to put the railings up here. So you could draw it sort of like a ladder, where you kind of draw two lines close together, skip some space, two lines close together, skip some space, two lines close together. There's some railings. I could add some more here, but I'm not going to. All right, so that's day two. So day one, we worked below the waterline. Day two, we worked above the waterline. And so now on day three is when we start to add our pirates. So you need eight pirates. They, um, most of them need to be doing something, some kind of action, not just standing around looking around, but some can be looking around. And then you also need to um, have, they all need to be different. So they can't all be looking the exact same pirate. Um, they need to be wearing clothes, but not the same kinds of clothes. They can't be bald. You need to add some sort of hair, whether it's bald on the top of their head, but then they have facial hair, something, and then no stick people. 
Now you have to fit eight on here. So if you've drawn a nice big pirate ship like my, me, you might have to get creative on where you add your pirates. I could probably add two or three pirates up here. I could put a pirate sitting here. Um, you can add a parrot if you want, but that does not count as one of your pirates. So you need to um, draw your pirates, fit your pirates on the best you can. And I have handouts of different kinds of pirates that you can use. So you could do one sitting on a barrel if you want. This one I like to draw. It's re He's really easy to draw and you can stick him anywhere. You could stick him in the crow's nest. You could stick him looking out a porthole. This pirate is pretty easy to draw but you only see part of him so he's either going to need to be on deck looking over the side or out of the um, crow's nest. Same with this guy. This one's real complicated. Lots and lots of steps. You start with his head, and this is what he's gonna look like when he's finished. So you could really put him um, head to toe. You could do a pirate head to toe, and then it walks you through the rest of him in his peg leg, which is pretty cool. And then he's got a hand with a sword in it, so I give you lots of ideas. Here's someone looking out with a telescope. Um, um, different ways to do some other details if you want to add those details. And this one's running with a peg leg and a sword. So we've got lots of different parts to choose from. You don't have to do any of these in the packet at all. You can um, draw your own pirates. It's really up to you. But you need to add eight pirates somewhere on your ship. So let's look at my finished example here. So. These pirates aren't, a lot of them are not out of the catalog. Like this one here I drew on my own. This one here is one on my own. But let's see, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pirates. I don't have any in the water, but you could have some that were scuba diving or some that were kicked off the ship and they walked the plank and fell down. Um, this pirate I drew from head to toe, but the rest of them I just drew from the chest up. Oh, this one's head to toe too. So two out of the eight were head to toe. The rest are just from the chest up. So it's not a whole lot. And then they each look different. And that's really important to me that each of your pirates look different, that they don't all look the same. Here's um, one that's not quite finished. I've got a pirate's arm here, and I would count that as a pirate because that's pretty clever there. This pirate I drew on my own. We've got two looking out the x-ray vision here. And then there's a parrot, but the parrot doesn't count. So this one isn't quite done, but here's some other places that you could add some pirates. And so you're going to add your pirates onto your drawing. All right, so there are my eight pirates. So now, on the last day, we're gonna do some shading. So the first thing you're gonna do is get this handout here, and I want you to write your name at the top, and the day you have art, day A, day B, day C, and then you're gonna do W and B. Notice this is your value scale. You're gonna go from lightest to darkest, white, being here, black being here, so you're going to start real light and go dark, or start dark and go light, whatever's easiest for you. So I'm going to go real light. Notice how I'm coloring the same direction in each box. Same direction. I'm not scribbling or going round because that'll give me a nice even value. And with each box I press a little bit harder, or maybe I even go over it one extra time. Go back and forth. The box doesn't have to be filled in completely, but we need to see a gradual change in value as you get to number seven box. Each box needs to be different. We shouldn't, two boxes next to each other shouldn't look similar. 
Now remember, if you have two boxes that are similar, you can always take an eraser and erase one and make it a little bit lighter, or you can always go back and add and make it darker. So there's my value scale, and I want to see a variety of value throughout your drawing. So you have your drawing complete. Now you're going to add value and a nice dark outline. So for instance, your, your ship's hull is going to be darker under the water than it is above the water. So these boards underneath the water should be shaded darker than the boards above. So I'm going to go through with my pencil and outline first, pressing hard to get a nice dark outline for my pencil and to uh, separate and look at the different boards because I just kind of drew light until I got it right. So I need to go back, trace these carefully, the grain on the board, and you're going to probably need to sharpen your pencil a bunch. Okay, so now I want to start shading because the first step really is to outline. So you can do it in parts like I do. Like I did, I outlined this heavily and now I'm going to shade it in and then I'll outline something else heavily and shade it in. Or you can go through and outline everything heavily and then shade in. So now the everything below this waterline should be darker than the wood above because when wood gets wet it gets dark in color. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to shade these boards nice and neat side to side but I'm not going to press so hard that you can't see the wood grain anymore or the knots or the nails in the boards. Nice and neat all in the same direction and now I'm getting close to the waterline. So as I get close to the waterline I want to stop with this value when you shade, you're not shading and covering up all your beautiful drawing. You're adding value, you're adding more interest and more realism. So don't ruin your drawing when you start to shade in. That you shade it in real sloppy or you just completely cover up this beautiful detailed drawing that you've created. Okay, so there's my darker value. You can still clearly see the wood grain and the slats of the wood. So now the wood above the waterline is going to be lighter. So I'm going to press lighter, not as hard, and just lightly shade in this wood. So now you can clearly see a different value change. I think I'm going to darken this up just a little bit more to make it look really wet. Now the rudder is made of wood too, so I shaded that the same value as the rest of the, the hull of the ship need a really dark dark value remember on the value scale we had a, the seven so I'm going to do the pirate treasure chest in that dark value so I'm going to outline it heavily with my pencil and then I'm going to color it in nice and dark and shade it in with my pencil again shading all in the same direction okay so when looking at the value scale Wood slats underneath the water is probably about a five, and then my wood slats above the water is probably about a three. I've got a seven here or a six with the treasure chest, so I need probably a four and a two and a one somewhere. So I'm going to keep that in mind as I work. Not everything has to be shaded in, but a lot needs to be shaded in to create some interest and some contrast. And I don't really have kind of a six, so I'm going to shade this dark. You can add some things in your sky too if you like. You're going to keep shading and keep working on this until it's mostly shaded. You can see I don't have a lot of contrast and value on this one. This one's much better and nicer shaded. I've got a lot of darker areas. This is mostly light areas. So oh, um. It, this isn't quite finished, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how to um, fill out your handout. You're going to go through and you're going to mark the number on the side of the um, value scale that matches what these are. So like wooden boards above the waterline. If You could take your value scale and lay it down and look, but it's probably about a 2, so I'm going to write a number 2 on this line next to that. Wooden boards below the waterline, we had talked to they're probably a 5. The C, I did not shade the C, so I might put white for the C, W. For the rudder, the rudder's the same as the wooden boards below the waterline, so that's a five. The rudder is the same as the boards below the waterline, so that's a five. The masts, I did about a six 
or a seven. I think I did more of a seven for those. And you just keep going through down here. Did you use all seven shades? So after you fill in all these, look and see if you're missing any numbers. And then this other thing, you get to put one other thing on here. So maybe I put treasure chest. Fill that in, you pick whatever's not on here and fill in what you did. So I think I'm gonna put B for black. Did you use all seven shades, yes or no? What shades did you use the most of? So what do you have the most numbers on? So I have a finished sheet filled out here. So um, yes, I put a Y. What shade did you use the most of? I put a three, because that was the number that was over here the most. Uh, what did you use the least of? Six is what I put over here, okay? And then how many shaded pirates do you have? I should have eight shaded pirates. So on this one, not all my pirates are shaded. I need to go back and shade those. So this is a good place to look to see if you've completed all of the shading that you need to. And then the very bottom, you're gonna rate yourself. You're gonna give yourself a grade above the deck, including details. Would you give yourself a four, a three, a two, or a one? Below the deck, shading, how did you do? And then your pirates, are, they, are there some action pirates and do you have eight? And once this is filled out and you've completely filled in all your shading and your value for your pirate ship, you have completed your value pirate ship drawing. Good job, fourth grade.